did you hear about George Floyd? So, um, footage, well, the body cam footage from the George Floyd unfortunate passing has been released. And it kind of raises a few questions, in it, about why the narrative around George Floyd's death was painted in a certain way. It didn't really need to, right? Um, essentially, the footage just released. I'm not going to play it because I think it's a little bit, you know, a bit OTT. You probably will see in the original clips that went around with him essentially crying out for his mum in his dying moments and stuff. But the body camera footage or the body cam footage just shows the initial things that happened prior to him actually getting arrested or putting the cuffs on him and it paints a completely different picture from what we were led to believe right of course it doesn't um it doesn't really justify the fact that he died in police custody i think in general american police tend to have a bit of a um, they, they get a bit too handsy when it comes to arresting or when it comes to uh, figuring out how to sort out an issue with someone, right? If someone's going through something, a manic episode or whatever it may be, right? They have a, they only have, seem to have like one gear, right? It's either zero to or a hundred. And of course, you know, um, if you're unfortunate and you happen to live in a, um, let's say in a poverty stricken area more likely than not you're gonna feel the full brunt of that more so than people that live in you know in more affluent or people that have more affluent means so the first thing that comes to mind when you see the george floyd in video the body cam image is that number one he was high out of his mind completely right he was kind of clenching his jaw foaming at the mouth a little bit he had little white crust bits all along with his white corner and just being manix repeating things again and again and again so obviously he was high off something who knows meth pcp fentanyl we have no idea um i think the toxicology report said that he had quite a bunch of things in his system at the time you know again that's no excuse for someone to be murdered but that's one thing to note and then of course police officers having to encounter somebody that's that high and then having to kind of you know calm them down so that they can inquire as to the crime that occurred is also probably a little bit difficult i'd imagine for police officers to do especially when those three was it four of them right at the same time i can imagine there can be a bit of weird power play but it did make me think when i saw the video because i think there's one bit where he's sort of sitting down and then immediately they come at him with guns drawn or in a, in a manner that seemed a bit aggressive right it did make me think um should it even be a crime to attempt to pass a fake 20 pound note in a liquor store should that be something that requires the police to come in with a full force to try and take you down of course some police officers might argue and say hey you never know he might be the point of contact we need to bust an illegal currency ring somewhere right a counterfeit ring somewhere he might be that kind of person but usually if he is the one of the foot soldiers that's been given a fake 20 he has no idea who's making them right he's probably you know most criminal organizations don't let foot soldiers or people that they kind of you know dispose on the streets have any sort of access to them it's never going to happen so it's very strange that they'd want to go in really ham on him especially as well if you if you if you think about it i would assume that someone like a george floyd or somebody in his position is probably very familiar with the police right they probably know of him they probably had to maybe you know take him home a few times and when he's been drunk or point him in the right direction or tell him to wake up whatever right he's probably been in that situation where he's encountered police officers numerous times so for them to go at him so hard in the beginning right knowing who he was and what he meant to the com not what he meant to community but his place in the community was a bit excessive like it's like you know you wouldn't go uh you know with a full meat wagon right and try and pick up a couple of homeless people that live in around the corner from you because you know those guys right they, they should know who those people are they should know who the local crackheads are they should know who they are i'm not saying he was but come on um and then uh, the what, one thing that was really, really distressing actually was that the actual reason why he ended up on the floor in the first place was kind of his own fault in his maybe panic state. He was complaining that he was claustrophobic and he didn't want to sit in a car alone. The police officers kept telling him they're going to lower the windows and he didn't want to, he didn't think that was enough. He wanted to get out. He can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. They eventually take him outside. And when they do, that's when they place him on the floor because they, they can't, I guess they don't have any confidence in being able to restrain him standing up because he's a big dude, isn't it? And of course, that makes you think again, right? Why are they unable to restrain somebody, even if they happen to be quite big, right? There should be a technique. There should be a way to restrain somebody without requiring four officers to lay on top of him, right? With all their weight and one to have his knee directly on his neck, which is, you know, apprehensible, really. And again, it's just, 
it's just a really distressing situation all in, right? Because number one, the media lied, right? And told us one thing, tried to paint George Floyd out as some, you know, innocent, not innocent, well, let's say totally innocent guy who happened to be mistaken for somebody else and all of a sudden he lost his life. No, he was kind of, you know, by the letter of the law, he was doing something illegal, uh, supposedly. Again, we don't know because, you know, they could have easily planted that note on him. They could have easily, you know, the kid that called him out could have easily been mistaken. We don't know, but regardless, right? to deal with somebody that is trying to pass a 20 pound a fake tw 20 dollar bill like that is just beyond reproach you just cannot do that you shouldn't be involved in a situation where somebody's trying to pass a bill off and then suddenly you're involved in a fisticuffs or some sort of tussle that doesn't make any sense that's poor police work and that's what that video basically proves that the police don't get good training it's a pretty crappy job, right? For the most part, I'd assume day-to-day -day police officers are having to deal with situations that involve people who are intoxicated or high or whatever it may be, more so than they're dealing with actual violent crime, um, with actual robberies, with things that actually damage and hurt the community or the, you know, the residents of that community more so directly. They're having to, you know, essentially try and babysit grown men and grown women who have decided to, you know, throw their lives away via drinking alcohol i'm not saying that george floyd did but you know that's what they're doing day to day so you can only imagine you know, especially if you come into it with your own little prejudices with your own bigotry um with your own distorted view on what the world is like i can imagine and a bit of a power complex right imagine that's such a bad 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 combination for a piece of self for, for a civil servant it doesn't really make any kind of sense so that's what you got from the video really from watching it you know he obviously wasn't, you know, completely all there at the time, but it's just sad to think, you know, someone passed away during those circumstances, but it's also quite gnarly to think about what's kind of transpired since, right? Because we've seen loads of these body cam videos, I feel like anyway, you see loads of these clips, the videos of somebody having a really mad time with a police officer and you know nothing really comes of it you know the police officers get acquitted the social media posts die down everyone kind of moves on but it feels like people are still stoking the flame of this um of this moment which is great to see i think in general i think if you live in america and you want some kind of change in terms of how police deal with minorities in um less than affluent areas you're going to need to just keep pounding the pavement you're going to need to just keep you know ringing the alarm and just continually going on and on about this because you can't let go of the moment you have to seize this moment it's the only moment in time i think that there's actually going to be some real change of course there's been some nonsense along the way but that is you know that's the nature of the game it is what it is but for those people that are actually trying to enact some real change this is the moment you have to seize it with both hands it's just a shame you had to come off the back of some dude dying because you know he decided to try and buy a drink with a note that probably wasn't kosher but you know what can you do man what can you do